All right, thank you guys for, uh, for joining me here today. Um, gonna go ahead and jump into the, uh, the presentation. It's, uh, it's sort of a funny thing. We, we did this, a, not exact, but a very similar presentation about a, at a conference about nine months ago or so, and the, the title was something like Using NLP Techniques to Extract Data from a Modern Entity Framework. Anyway, there were like three people here and, and a guy in a Battlestar Galactic t-shirt, but I think AI That Reads is a much, much better title, so. I guess it worked. <laughs> so moving on, I'm, uh, I'm Nick Vandiver, I'm the CEO of ThoughtTrace. A um, little background on our company, we released the, uh, the product, which we'll, we'll show you guys at the end of the presentation today, in uh, January 2017, uh, is a very domain-specific approach uh, to training uh, AI for text-based problems. And by that I mean complex documents, contracts, things like that. Contracts is like a ubiquitous use case across really all sorts of industries, but it certainly extends beyond that, and we think of it more as building intelligence around documents. Um, I'd say interestingly, as you think about a conference like Tableau, uh, you guys that are out there wrangling data and creating visualizations and doing these great things for, for your companies and organizations, like by and large, a lot of the data that you've, you've been able to get to today, really have access to, have been those things that are, that are pretty traditional in nature, right? CSV files, IOTs become a very real thing recently, more time series data, but people tend to forget, or they put in isolation and sort of dark data category, all those facts that exist in, in documents. It's not the most exciting thing, but it's a very important thing, uh, exist in documents throughout your enterprise. And it's like really by even very sophisticated companies often just seen as, well, it's just this thing. They're in PDFs and, and we can't get to that. So we, we kind of make do, we control F it, uh, you know, do some OCR to see if we can make it work. But, they're haphazard solutions at best, and at a like, very fundamental level, uh, we built our company with the idea of addressing that, that gap in the market. So with that, we'll go ahead and get into this. So agenda today, I think I sound very loud when I turn to the side right there, perhaps not. Um, agenda today, we're gonna start off with really de demystifying what we mean by digital, digital transformation. Um, number two, going into uh, uh, achieving true contract intelligence, like, we're, I, like I will present this in light of contract intelligence. Do not let the fact that we're talking about contracts specifically in this presentation limit your thinking to just contracts. Like we've been talking to companies at this conference and things as diverse as pharma and grants research and, and federal regulations and all kinds of stuff, non-contractual but complex documents with ambiguous, hairy, hidden facts that are very meaningful to their companies. Like, those are the, those are the problems that we tackle. And then finally, uh, a, a quick demo of our, our platform itself. So moving on. Digital transformation is like the latest buzzword that consultants love to throw out to get projects funded. Like, what, is, what does this actually mean, right? So a lot of people are doing it. You can look at the statistics here, but, um, you know, roughly, these are statistics we've gathered, but roughly 70% of companies have some sort of initiative around that in mind. Um, it is one of the main things that certainly uh, in the IT office or the, the CIO's office that, that people focus on. A tremendous amount of money, you know, $1.3 trillion estimated is being spent on it, and a tremendous amount of money is being wasted on it as well, the $900 billion number. So a lot of people are spending a lot of money to do hard, non-incremental, transformative things, and you know, sometimes that works. Oftentimes, it does not. That's sort of the reality that we're dealing with at this point in time. So as we think about it, and this is just our experience in dealing, and it's not just isolated to our product, but our clients as a whole, but like, what, it, what does it mean and what, what are we trying to achieve? Like, if we were to break down sort of that journey of transforming digitally, like, what does that actually look like as we diagnose a problem? So what are the goals? Like, basically, and. It could be, you know, this could be what we do or what any of you guys are doing, but can we amplify and clarify understanding of critical business information, number one, right? Number two, are we going to improve a decision-making process? It's sort of another, another checkpoint in that, uh, in that approach. Do we make it easy to access and share information? Do we actually legitimately start to break down silos? It's something you guys, as, as Tableau folks, deal with, with all the time. Do these things function as a strategic asset? So, We'll often, this is a very important one, but it, it's, it's a lesson of not going down rabbit holes you shouldn't go down, right? Like, we'll have clients that come to us and say, man, it's awesome that you can do this stuff with complex documents and contracts and all this stuff. It'd be great if we could, we could build this super algorithm that goes and tackles this very niche problem over here. And oftentimes we look at those things 
and you find something that would be very expensive to solve and add very little value. It's just a cool factor, that sort of thing. Crazy amount of money gets spent on stuff like that, and it's best to avoid it, because you really, in addition to not doing things that are necessarily worthwhile, you undermine sort of the efficacy and the belief by the, by the business and all those other things that are worth doing. Um, and then as we think about AI, so like as we kind of layer in what we do and other, other folks that are taking an approach to machine learning, um, really two primary points of emphasis. Does that AI get smarter over time? Is it enhanced or is it really a point in time snapshot? And you'll see, where is it up here? In the top right hand corner, um, is it enhanced over time or is the AI really a st static snapshot of your data? And by that I mean like if you're familiar with machine learning techniques, I could come in and I've got a data set and I train an AI uh, algorithm on top of that. If that's an overly biased data set, like if that literally exists in a silo and it's how your company has, whether it's configured that contract or done that business process for years, like you are inherently creating a biased AI at the end of the day. Like you're not creating a durable thing going forward. So how do, how do we A, create durability in, into what we would deploy today if we are gonna use techniques involving artificial intelligence? And number two, like how do we incorporate learnings from outside that organization to ensure that that algorithm is not static in nature, that it's not overly structured, that it's not rigid, that it's something that does get smarter uh, as, as sort of business requirements change and things change in the environment to allow it to adapt. And then one of our goals, and I, I think like largely as you think about deploying machine learning techniques, like what's my time to value? If I go buy an AI product, right, and I, I'm gonna spend six months or nine months configuring this thing, like what does that path to value look like? What am I gonna spend to get there? And sort of what are the nominal results at the, at the end of that? If we can do things that are turnkey, where like literally from our thought process, taking a very domain specific approach to what we do, if we can create value on day one, right? Like if we can prove out to the business users, the non-technical users that, hey, these 20 things that you had to do yesterday, like we can do them much faster today and it improves over time, then you really legitimately get buy-in from the non-technical people as well, which is like really in the change management aspect is one of the hardest things that, uh, that I think we deal with as IT professionals. So let's get into talking about digital transformation for documents here. Like we would lump this as you, as you think about where content exists today into a few different categories. Paper files, you probably, all you guys probably have some of those in your organizations. Uh, but by and large, like the trend towards overall digitization, and by that I literally mean just taking like paper and making it a digital file, you know, th that, that by and large were there in, in many industries, although there are certainly some laggards catching up. I would not say that was the case four or five years ago. Number two on this list, and this is really sort of ROI and value as you think about deploying solutions, that sort of thing. Uh, legal outsourcing as you think about contracts. Uh, you know, a, a lot of our folks like they'll take, I've got a project I'm doing, I'm gonna take 10,000 contracts and outsource that to a bunch of attorneys. Extraordinarily expensive. I've got that law firm's bias on how they look at these contracts and um, the, the time to value is slow because it's still a manual review process and it's quite expensive. Then we move up, if you see this red dot in the center, in the center uh, digital document management systems, been around for a long time, uh, very robust capabilities, but not inherently intelligent in terms of how they look at content or, or anything like that. They're only as good as the taxonomy, the cataloging, the metadata that people apply around it. So really, like with those solutions, very tough from an adoption standpoint, because again, you've got this thing that you set up 10 years ago or maybe 20 years ago or five years ago, and it's not really evolving with the needs of the business over time. And then we get into stuff like build your own AI, and I would throw kind of the, uh, uh, the broad contract analytics space in there along with a lot of other AI tools. And they're great, I'm not knocking all of these, they're great cases for it. Um, but those are, are kind of cumbersome ways to approach the problem, and that you've gotta have good and diverse data sets to train with, uh, but it's gonna take a lot of time and money uh, to do so. So what we do, specifically for our company, is it's the, uh, the of course, the top uh, blue circle in the, in the right hand corner is take a very turnkey domain specific approach to deploying AI for document based solutions. So by that we mean if, if somebody here works for a, uh, an airline and somebody else works for a biotech company, we don't walk in, or our, let me extend that even further, our models don't walk in with the assumption that, that company A has the same needs as company B. You've really got to distinguish to say, okay, within that industry or that business or the use case they're tackling, there are gonna be some extraordinarily detailed and nuanced aspects to what they do 
that are gonna be absolutely relevant for the business. And you've gotta be able to build algorithms that get, get down to those very discrete facts. And that's a very rigorous and time consuming process to do so. But if you can do it, and, and this, this has been our approach to date in the, in the markets that we target, you can create solutions where quite literally, and, and really, I mean, this is a huge part of the promise of, of, of machine learning. Like on day one, you provision that site, that, that customer goes up and they're getting value out of that immediately. Like it is, it is day one value that improves over time. It is not, I'm spending six months to stand this thing up and I've got to train it on a huge variety of data and everything else. So moving on, on the, uh, on, the, on the document problem. So lack of organization, minimal confidence in data quality, manual rework, surface level data, and a static view of the business are like overwhelmingly consistent things that we see across our customer base, prospects that we talk to. It, like it is the reality, even for, for companies that have taken a very progressive viewpoint towards digitizing, digitizing their content and you know, using good OCR techniques so you can go control F and everything else. It's still a very kludgy process, is the reality at the end of the day that we see. <clears throat> so where do you guys fall on the spectrum? Like manual, paper-based storage? Hopefully not, if you're at a Tableau conference. If you are, you could probably buy a scanner. Uh, number two, like basic, digital files with rigid access. This would describe traditional document management approaches. Uh, number three, intelligent storage and integration. And then four, transformative, which is where we're going beyond like traditional machine learning techniques to say, we're gonna deploy algorithms that are absolutely specific to the nature of your business and should bring non-technical business users value on the first day they start using the software. So there are, there are fewer and fewer people in sort of tier one here, thankfully. Uh, there are a lot in tier two, very few in, in tier three, and, and I would argue uh, not many companies all yet in, uh, in that final tier of transformative. This is, uh, you guys at the back certainly cannot read this, I'll do my best to explain it to you. But this is a report from the IACCM uh, from this year. That's an international group uh, that deals with contract lifecycle management, contract analytics, and, and the overall contract management profession. Um, but two points of note here. Whoop. Let's go back. Two points of note here. If you look at uh, repositories of contracts, this is like the trend of digitization right here, right? So, and we've got industries, aerospace and defense, manufacturing, construction, like you name it, across the top. A lot of, a lot of different industries, government, across the top. Digitization of documents in this solidly colored line right there. Like, increasingly, people are, have digitized or are digitizing. Now we go down to, like, actually leverage machine learning techniques to get some intelligence out of this. This is adoption of just basic contract analytics across the bottom. It's extraordinarily low. Like, in most cases, less than 10%. So there's a tremendous green field out there to say, there's a lot of digitized documents out there that exist within your enterprises. You're garnering very little to no intelligence from them. Like other than somebody like literally opening up a PDF and doing a control F, that kind of thing. It is not data that you're by and large, the most important data is not data that you're getting to, to ultimately bring into Tableau or something like that. So what does contract intelligence look like? So from our standpoint, as we think of this process, this would be true of a lot of document creation processes. You walk things like, through things like request negotiation, uh, kind of the, the triage around the contract itself, the signature, and all of that, and that, that thing's signed. And a lot of people tend to think, okay, well, it's done, like we're good, we got that contract signed, we're moving on. Whether it's sales related, or you know, who's buying from whom, or, or what the arrangement may, may be. But the actual adherence to that contract language or understanding of it falls into this sort of chasm, right? And, and that's really where we step in, where people don't understand, you know, hey, what are the actual obligations vis-a-vis -vis this contract? If I'm gonna sell part of my business, for example, I'm gonna sell off a line of business, which of my contracts require notice if I'm to go assign those? Which ones have pref rights on them? If our company's in some sort of financial issue, like if we, if we don't make t payments in a timely manner, where might penalties kick in? Might those contracts terminate? Um, where are we restricted from making price escalations in our agreements, things like that. Uh, it's just a smattering, but th to give you a sense of this, we, the first model we deployed uh, January 2017, there were about 30 of those sort of facts that we could identify within agreements, uh, and today it's north of 1,000, right? And as you, as you dive into new domains, like the degree of specificity that people need to get to, depending on the nature of their business, is, uh, is pretty amazing. So what's it look like, the digital, uh, digital transformation step from a document standpoint? Like number one, basic document management, like understanding what documents you have and where. 
uh, is step number one. Like you're not gonna get intelligence out of those things until you understand what they actually are. Number two, the abstraction of them, like literally taking those facts and making them things that are searchable without having to physically open up a document and, uh, and, and read it, and then enabling users with search, and then better data equals better insights. So if I, can, if I can take all these facts and turn them into reportable things, how do I then translate that into other systems to add value, be it something like Tableau or an ERP system or anything else? So traditional methods of document management, extraordinarily cumbersome. A lot of setup, the, the agreements you're dealing with are only as good as the metadata that you apply to it, uh, which is a, a major hurdle. Collaboration's quite difficult. Um, really painful things that suffer from adoption and inherently create silos just by their very nature. So what does digitally transformed actually look like, right? From, and th this is what we call document intelligence. So over here on the left, we've got, uh, we've got unstructured data, document intelligence, this, in our case, this would be where our app and our AI steps in and then the outcome of that. So key data extraction, data classification, and advanced document research. So rather than having silos of document that only the right person knows, hey, where that fact exists that I need to go look for, what if we make those things very searchable, much like you, know, you get on Amazon and search for something? That should be the goal. And then as you think about extracting data from agreements, uh, specifically, or complex documents, oftentimes people start off with like a very superficial viewpoint to say, hey, we want to understand the type of the contract, the parties, maybe effective date, termination date, like just traditional stuff that is quite obvious. That's all well and good, but the thing they typically miss at first and start to pick up on a little bit later on is the, is the far more profound stuff, right? The stuff that can actually bite them and cause, uh, cause major unforeseen circumstances further on down the road. You know, when do changes in re regulations affect an agreement population, for instance? Where do you have unforeseen operational upsets, uh, conditions on assignment, uh, variations in payments, things like that? So the point of this, if you take a domain-specific approach to analyzing documents with AI, is that you can get way beyond just the surface-level things into the very, very profound, deep things that are specific to your business. So how does this work for us? So unstructured data goes in the top end of the funnel, so to speak. That data gets categorized, step number two. And then we send that off to uh, do uh, identity, identity uh, extraction identification. That opens up the possibility to easily be able to question that data. So rather than, if I've got an answer or a question around assignment, you know, where do I require consent to assign to, to be able to sell an asset, that sort of thing. Rather than physically having analysts go through and read you know, whether it's 10 or 100 or 1,000 or 100,000 contracts, what if I can just go search for that sort of thing? Like literally click, click, show me where I have consent to assign and give me a result. And I'll, I'll show you that here in just a couple minutes. And then from there, like how do I take that data that was inaccessible before because it was really dark data, going back, because it was dark data, how do I make that structured data that, that, that's then reportable? And that's really where the integration piece comes in via API. How do we integrate that with ERP systems, with Tableau? How do we mesh it with other data to where, the, to where you can answer more complex questions than, uh, than you otherwise could? And so from an insight perspective, if you can take all of these facts, all this data, a lot of it binary data, it just can't be interpreted currently as such, if I can take all this data from documents and I can start to mesh that with you know, what I get from Excel, my time series data, everything else, I'm getting a much more complete picture of the business that just like flat out was not accessible in the past. And, and that's the goal here. So in our model, like we essentially build performing AI algorithms that are informed uh, by how our customers interact with the software to make them better over time. And then uh, we take those learnings and our customers ultimately leverage those to get value out of the tool and to integrate it into, uh, into other applications as well. Geospatial examples, Tableau, things like that. All right, I'm going to jump into a quick demo here. So you guys are gonna have to bear with me because I can see it up here, but I can't see it there. So I'm gonna be a little bit turned to the side here. So this is, a, uh, this is an example of our, uh, where are we? Of our platform. So 
if you guys will see here in the upper right hand corner, we have some number of, it's probably about 150,000 different facts among an entire population of, I think probably around 1,000 contracts uh, that our software is identifying. And I'm gonna use uh, assignment as an example. If I said, okay, if I'm looking within leases, I wanna find anywhere where consent to assign exists. If you guys don't know what consent to assign is, that may basically means if I'm selling an asset to another party, this happens all the time, or I'm the one buying the asset, like I need to inform the counterparty on that contract that that thing is happening and get their permission before I can make that assignment. Like this, this costs companies millions and millions of dollars every year, sometimes like well under the tens of millions of dollars because they don't understand where these things exist. So I would go into my lease population and you will see that number up here in the top right hand corner shrink dramatically from where we started by selecting the document type. And then I'm gonna go down to assignment open that up and this should kind of look and feel much like uh, something like Amazon. And let's go into consent. Consent required. So I click on that and I can't see what that number shrunk down to but we're probably, I don't know, around 100 or under 100, something like that. So the, the net of this is like by training a domain specific model for documents, very long way of getting there, but tra training a very domain specific model using AI for documents, like literally in the space of about three clicks, I, I did right here, making a very big problem, a small problem, what would take a team of attorneys, in most cases, weeks or months to do. So like we, we've had clients uh, that, that have done acquisitions where they've been able to build out, one of them was literally a $10 billion acquisition, this was about a year ago, uh, that one of our clients did, where they were able to go through, it was somewhere around 30,000 uh, leases and other, other commercial agreements and analyze for consents and other obligations. And they basically had their, uh, the results set in about two days. And this like truly would have been, you know, three, four months of a huge team of people uh, outsourced doing this sort of thing. But they did it literally in mouse clicks uh, with a much higher degree of accuracy. So there are two effects that come out of that. Like number one, obviously, like the ROI is absolutely tremendous on this sort of thing. Number two, and I think the far more exciting thing is beyond being able to answer the questions tomorrow that take you a ton of time to answer to the today that you have to answer, being able to get it information that is this narrow and this specific allows you to start thinking about the data and the facts and the thoughts that are bound up within your documents in a completely different way. And really the, the effect that has uh, on, the, on the user and really the company as a whole is they start to not think about documents, it's complex documents, it's a source of dark data, right? Like this is information we can get to and we absolutely should get to it and we should leverage it as a competitive advantage going forward. So I'll show you guys too from, from here. You can go through and if that were a consent for instance, I'm gonna try to, I can't really see where the mouse is there. You can pop into the document itself and it take you to the exact place within the agreement that that exists. So. The idea here with what we're doing, and I, like, I, would, I would think about like, really any, any space you go apply uh, machine learning techniques to it, and this is running very slow over the internet. It's very fast in reality. Um, the idea here is not that you're utilizing AI as a replacement for human beings, right? But if you can take big problems and make them very, very small problems, you're making these things much, much more manageable, and you're allowing people to assert their judgment over what what really computers, in this case machine learning techniques, are much better at identifying than teams of people just sifting through reams and reams and reams of data. And it really does have a transformative effect on the, on the business itself. So with that, that is the, the end of the demo. I will, uh, I will turn it over to you guys for, uh, for any questions you might have.